Party people, what's going on? This is Samaj Marsh from the founder of BlueDeathLight.com. I want to welcome you guys back to a special edition of Blue Death After Dark. It's been a long time. I shouldn't have left you. Tonight, I got uh, one of, of two co-hosts who's here right now. I think Doug's in transit. But, uh, of course, my right-hand man, long-time A&T insider. Beat right on BlueDeathLight.com for over two decades. The current president of the Greensboro chapter of the AAS. And my right-hand man, Mr. Craig Turner. What's going on, CT? Hey, not much, man. Um, uh, back again for that for that spring that spring look 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 see and yeah yeah been a, been a busy 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 off season busy off season busy 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 uh, we got there oh. last Saturday and uh yeah. guys uh guys are coming along we're gonna we're gonna indeed. We're going to jump into it, give a full recap of everything that we saw with our eyes and ears uh, um, Saturday. I think we, 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 we took in, um, and then we definitely want to open up the show to you guys, the fans. It's been a long time since we really had a, a, a fan full show. Uh, we've always had these special guests the last couple of shows, and so now we want to open it back up to the fans and get your opinion on what's going on in Aggie Land. Um, that's what so so we've been having baseball. I mean, you know, if you've been following AT Roy on social media, he, he puts out a list every week this week in Aggie Land, and it's like 16, 15 events every single week. So softball, tennis, everything in between, uh baseball, bowling, track. But um uh you know, of course, the main thing that kind of drives our floats our boat is, is that football. And Craig, you were um, you were at the stadium along with me last Saturday at one o'clock. First of all, the school, you know, when they when they start hyping this bad boy up, they was they said this is what we're going to try to grow into a big event, right? They said uh, this is this is this is going to have uh, some of Coach Brown's fingerprints on it. He he wants to do a little bit more uh, upscale than we've done in the past. So um, I, and I, I would say this from an announcing standpoint the um the rate of messages i saw on my social media feed was a lot more than usual and um i think they uh they, they said they were uh, bringing out food trucks a dj they had some uh, little in between quarter games with you know kicking balls with field well, in, in your opinion craig what how was the you know the pop and circumstance last saturday as far as that being a big event well i mean I, well, let me say this. First of all, I was pleased with the attendance. Yeah, uh, that's the most people I've seen at a spring game at A and T in a long, long time. Uh, the uh, you know, it's first year, uh, first year that they really have really even uh, talked about you know promoting the spring game. So you know, I wasn't expecting anything fantastic, over the top, or anything like that. So it, it was about what I expected. Um, but, uh, uh, I was just glad to see that the fans, the, the turnout, uh, the turnout for that was really, really good. Uh, I said, uh, cause I've, we, we've gone to spring games before and, you know, it'd be me, you and a couple of seagulls sitting out there. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, so it, uh, it, it didn't, if you look, if you looked at the clip they put on online, you know, they it shot it from the home side. So there was like three people sitting on the visitor side, so it didn't look like anybody yeah. was here. But on the home, trust us, you know, you know, we don't know if anybody took a shot, but there, that thing was pretty. It was pretty, you know, dense over there. That, that was a lot of folks. I mean, I would guesstimate at, at least three thousand. I would say, yeah, at least, at least, at least the part. The, the, there was no parking space, and folks were, uh, and of course, you know, you always got those people who are going who came out and tailgated. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and never made it inside. So, you know, we have that every game. So uh yeah, we had a real good turnout. I was pleased with it. I think it I think as the years go by and uh uh as A and T football gets back into its normal uh winning patterns, uh you you know, we'll we'll probably see five, six thousand people out there without any issues. Um the the biggest thing is that uh, it that's the type of event that you got to plan for probably about six months in advance for. Right, right, right. It's right. not something. It's not. It's not something. It's not something that you can do within a you know 
10 day or two week period and put together and spent a, a huge fanfare. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, I think they, um, they realized that kind of like towards the end, uh, because they had been teasing, um, a more, I guess, revamped spring game format for a while. I remember they had like a, um, a Aggie pride cast deal with the coaches and, uh, Brian Holloway, our SID was asking coach Brown, you know, was this going to be a little bit more than usual? He was kind of, you know, playing coy, but he, you know, he ended there was going to be some extra stuff. So I think they wanted to do a big, you know, full, full production. And um, I don't know, I don't know how you say, I think, I think the planning aspect we still need to work on. um, Cause uh, you know, I think, um, yeah, I I was expecting, to be honest with you, when when they said that they were going to do like a live stream, I was like, cool. I don't have to bring my camera. I don't have to worry about video. I can just watch Facebook afterwards and get all the clips from you guys, right? So I'm glad I didn't listen to myself because yeah. I found out that they were streaming it, but it was just audio. So they still didn't want, I guess, you know, to do a video <coughs> of the plays. And and I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. You know, I'm like, look here. You can go to ESPN and, and see, you know, Alabama, LSU, everybody's spring game, and it's on, it's on YouTube right now. So you know, no, I don't think too many people worry about. You know, a team that went one and ten and being all secretive. Just give it to the fans. Let them let them see it. Let them support you. Let them get excited. I don't think we need to play that close, close to the best. Um, and um, I was one. That, so let, let's go with the good and bad. So I heard that um, a lot of people enjoy basically having a spring game. You know, um, and you know, people who weren't there, they were able to listen to it. But I found out inside there was no concessions. And um, I was like, you had that many people there to make, you know, c- kill it. Um, and they, um, no concessions. And well, I think it was a food truck for the families. But, and then I could say some of the, uh, you know, there was um, a DJ was kind of playing, mixing in, in between some of the plays. And I mean, that was, to me, I, I, I didn't notice it. Um, I, I think, I'm, just, I, I'm not sure. I've been kind of off social media for a couple of days, but I think, Craig, you were saying that was a, uh, some type of issue with the band not being there, or can you feel me? No, I didn't. I was it wasn't. I, I didn't. I didn't know anything about any about the band being there. Don't, you know, I okay. I'm, I'm you know, if they there, they there. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's. I mean, it's a spring football game. I mean, right. you know, I yeah. come there for the football game. Right. <laughs> I come there to watch the game. Uh, you know, all the rest of it. You know, it, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, dies. <laughs> I know there's a big, yeah, pretty much. Uh, I know there's, there's been a back and forth, back and forth, uh, this way between folks, uh, as to why the band, you know, some people saying the band should be there, some people, you know, some folks saying no. Uh, I know the band's got, they have their, uh, they have their, uh, block party. Yeah, a student, it, it, you know, it's for the students, really. It's for the students, uh, oh, oh, basically, yeah, a band appreciation. Next Monday uh, at, the, at the Holland Bowl, yeah. it's uh, from four to six, I believe, and it's going to be. Um, and that's what that's what kind of confused me. It's going to be a all out, just you know, come out celebrate the March Machine being the number one HBC right. band in the country. Yeah. So, so, and I and I and I was assuming I think the firestorm started because I kind of asked out loud. I was like, so um, if they're going to perform at the celebration event on on Monday, why not just perform Saturday? And that'll be like a two for one, you know. And it's you know well they're, they're not they're not set I mean they're not they're not, they're not performing. performing I mean this it's kind of yeah. it's, it's it's much like what what we do uh, with the AAF when the athletes when school starts back up in the fall yeah we have all the we get all the student athletes together and we don't you know uh, and uh, we just have a you know we just have a big cookout and camaraderie and you know and. and uh, uh, let the kids, you know, enjoy themselves. It's really for the kids. It's not. It's not for us old heads. It's yeah. it's for the kids and the students. Uh, the the blue and gold marching machine this year was magnificent. I mean, they they took they've taken the the crown that they've had for some time unspoken and and but this now it's official that uh you know we're the best band got the best band best overall band in in the in, uh hbcu band in in the country really one of the best bands in the country period for that matter uh their sound quality is off the chart the um so i don't i didn't i don't i didn't i didn't have a problem with it yeah. uh again you know it, 
if if you want to if you want to do something like that, then that's that's that needs to be worked out. Like I said, months in advance. Right. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you know, it would have been nice, but it wasn't. It, it's not a deal breaker for me. It's just not. <laughs> yeah, and, and, I, and I think I think that's just part of the growing pains of, like you said, we're trying to make this into a big event, so we're learning on the fly, and so a lot of things we do, we're like, hey, you know, I want to, how about we have this, how about we have that, but then you see the logistics involved, you say, okay, well, we got to have to delay on some of that stuff, um, but I think next year, look, look, this time next year, if we're serious about continuing to go forward and continue to grow, right? And let's go ahead and put that request in. It's like you got to put in a, you know, a TPS report. You got to request the um, the presence of the of blue and gold marked machine. Say, so let's go. Let's let's try to get them to do something that they do at the uh, the fun fest, right? Because I think every year, right before mm -hmm. the season start, we have that little kickoff with the fun fest. And I know the band mm -hmm. always comes out, plays like three or four songs, and and, and gets out of there. So I was like, hey, let's do that for the let's do that for the spring game, you know. And I think I tried to introduce a word to the Aggie Nation lexicon this you know, past month is synergy, right? I'm all I'm all about mm -hmm. making everything from A&T flow together, right? So we had, we you know, I think I think it really started, well, I mean, it's, it's kind of been an ongoing thing, but for me, I was like, you know, that that um, that WNIT tournament game, which when our lady Aggie basketball team went on that unprecedented run, and they were like, you know, we had a full house at Corbett. First of all, what's the last time we had a postseason game inside Corbett? So that was crazy. Then, uh, you know, I tried to, I tried, I tried to put the word out, say, everybody, where your goals? We try to have a goal out, and I'm like, you know, let's all have everything possible to to rally around. And so I, I would have loved to see the pet band version of the March Machine at that WNIT game. So I'm always thinking every everything that's an asset yeah, I, that's, that's being to fold. I think, I think. I think that will may very well come to be uh, once we get the. You gotta remember, our athletic staff was is uh, was short staff for yeah. for almost two years, really, yeah. and uh, they're just now getting all the pieces in place. I think once you get a marketing director and 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 a, and a couple uh, a couple of, of assistants to really sit down and 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 have that. Are dedicated to do that. I think you'll see all that to come to fruition. But it's like anything else. It's you know, you you're kind of hamstrung by circumstance uh, until those circumstances you know improve. And I assume they will. I, you know, I don't know if, the, if, the, if a marketing director has been hired yet or not. I haven't heard anything. Yeah. Uh, but once that position is filled. And uh, and the, that all, and those auxiliary positions that are related to that or feel, I think I think you'll see all that. Uh, I think you'll see a much better. I think you'll see a much more cohesive uh, plan going forward. Well, hey man, I'm all for it. I would love to see it. Uh, it's been about two years since uh, uh, Carl Harrison left, right? It's been a minute since we. Yeah, had it was right. It was right. Yeah, it was right before the COVID outbreak. Jeez, yeah. Okay. It was right, so, it was right so, at the so, beginning so, of it. So, so we need we need to hire somebody quick, fast, in a hurry. So, look here, guys. Also, the other you know news announcement is that we finally uh, start uh, create. We start. We finally started um, uh, opening up our, our our online merchandise store, Blue Death Gear. Yeah. You know? Well, because because you know, Craig, you're kind of you know you and me both because of this platform, we kind of reach a almost a level of celebrity in the community. So we go out and about, everybody's talking about the show, right? And so when they come up to me, they say, yeah. hey, Smudge, I like the show. I love the, the, the podcast and everything. But my question is, how can I dress like Craig? How can I get down like CT? <laughs> that's, that's, that's he move. He move. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, look here, man. I can't give you his swag, right? But I might be able to give you some of the things he wears. So... So we uh we we opened up our little um I get our little online store on our website. You go to bluedefi.com or you uh you'll see it, you'll see the links in the fan form and on, on, the, on the main site. Um uh, and uh we got got all the new war boy shirts. If you represent the AT baseball program, you like what they're doing. We got war boy shirts, yeah. we got um we got you know hats and a bunch of 
Got some, got some, got some Reaper hats, man. Come on now, That's the best thing going. Yeah, you know what the street value something like this is, Craig. They, they were robbed before. Yeah, if you if you're a follower of Blue Death Valley, man, you got you got to get oh. to, you got to get you got to get some of those caps. Those caps are those, those caps are tight. Right, right. So look at Craig. This is how good I am. This is how nice of a dude I am. Uh -huh. yeah, I, I want to talk to some people tonight. This is gonna be our little fan show. And, That's uh, fine. I love gonna, I love talking to fans. We we gonna be here to nine thirty, uh, eight to nine. Yeah, nine thirty. 90 minutes so look if you are a first time you never call like if you troy or or uh aggie 94 or some, one of some new clowns it, it don't apply to you i want y'all i want to talk to y'all but look if you are never called this show never been on our show before i know a lot of people get camera shy a little little stage fright i want to talk to you especially look if you're in the band if you got something to say because everybody been talking to, <laughs> they've been telling me so much of their opinions online from the band community i want to talk to you right now on this show we're gonna give you some uh some free blue death gear, you know, her a hat, shirt, something. We'll figure it out. But uh any anytime if, for now, from, from now to the end of the show, you get if you click the link, I put the link in the chat, put it link, I'll put the link on the message board, I'll put the link on Twitter. Come on the show, give me your thoughts about the spring game, and I'm gonna give you a parting gift. So so that's my incentive for you guys. Um, but Craig, let's go ahead and jump into it. We got we got we gotta talk about this spring 2024 spring football game. Got a text from yeah. Doug. Doug's running a little bit late. Doug's been a busy man. You know, he's been a busy boy, but he's going to he's going to join the show pretty soon. And uh, well, we got to talk about it. So, Craig, who were, in your opinion, uh, after watching that big spring game, who were some of the big time winners? Who were the winners who came out of that? Um, individually, um, I had to look to the defense because uh, I that's. That, that defense is my baby, so I, I will look to the defense. I I saw some I saw some new personnel. I saw some new guys out there that uh, are difference makers, yeah. uh, and not playmakers. Difference makers. There's a difference between there. There's a there's a there. Don't get the two confused because they're yeah, yeah. very different. Yeah. Um, I thought uh, I was impressed with uh, 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 the Coles, uh, the freshman uh, Danny Coles. Hey Craig, uh, I didn't realize I, that was him until I watched the video. He was uh, wearing what, what number twenty two, I think. And uh, yeah, twenty two in blue. Yeah, he's he was on the, I guess the first team where what would be considered the first team defense. Right, at, at Play, playing that playing that rover. Yeah, playing, playing that, that rover, rover spot. spot. And he was flying around. He, that dude he, looks he, the part. He was he, <laughs> he was making plays. He was making plays. Uh I see why I see why Power Five folks was after him like crazy. That kid, so Craig, that kid is he's a specimen. Was he the guy that came in late? Was he one of, like the late guys we signed right before like the signing day? No, nah, he was early. He was early. He was early. Uh, early and real late. He's a freshman. He's a true freshman. No, no, no. I mean, he will I mean, be. I mean, I mean but, but was he like the day before early signing period? Because I think I wasn't like somebody who like uh, kind of fell through the cracks. He was. Uh, waiting yeah, for, like, we got. Five, he so commit. Like he committed to us about I guess probably about two or three days right before signing day right where yeah, okay. it, it yeah. dropped it dropped about a couple of days before signing day that uh that uh he was uh he had picked a and t um yeah. we were we, 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 I, I wish i wish we have that i wish we had that situation every day because uh that kick him that kick him <laughs> he's gonna be good <laughs> he's gonna be tough uh, sideline to sideline i think he i think he got a tackle for loss early on on that first drive yeah, yeah he, he was flying around I like what I saw out of our defensive tackles. Uh, the, the 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 freshman, the red shirt freshman that played last year, who were undersized, are no longer undersized, and I think that's that's the biggest thing I took away from. Um, like we discussed before the show and, la and last week uh, out of the stadium, I like the physicality is much better this year, like night and day between last year. This time coming out of spring ball and this year, the physicality, the physical makeup, just the just the 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 the, the bodies on these guys have improved so much more than they were a year ago. Um, uh, I saw guys last year that were playing at two forty, maybe you know two forty, two thirty five, trying to play defensive line. Those guys now are two seventy, two eighty. Uh, guys who were at two sixty. 265 and now you know pushing 300 pounds those that that somebody and hats off to hats off to the uh to the training staff they've put they've put some they've put some 
some some some weight on these guys, put some beef on them, put some muscle on them. I like our physicality. I last year we got pushed all over the field. Yeah, uh, it was you know we we would play good to a point, and then the physical toll was just wear us down, and then people would just blow us off the ball. Uh, I don't see that happening this year. Now I think the kids are much in much better physical conditions. Uh, much, much stronger, much faster. Um, yeah, Kelvin Broadhurst, I thought was excellent up front. Uh, Chris Allen, uh, uh, I was, is, is rapidly becoming one of my favorites along the defensive, uh, along that defensive front. I thought he had an outstanding game. Um, uh, so we, we, we have, uh, can't forget about we number zero. Players. Can't forget about number zero, the new guy, uh, <laughs> Joshua Hardy. Joshua Hardy. Yeah, Boston College, Boston College transfer. Uh, he is a dominant player. Um, we were wondering who was who was going to step up into that pass rush in after uh, um, uh, Medaille graduated. We were wondering who who was going to step up and be that guy uh, that you got to account for on every play. Well, uh, Josh Hardy is it. Uh, the uh, he he. I, uh, you know, I don't know what Boston College was thinking, <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> Somebody up there went to sleep. How you let this kid get away from you? I don't know. I, you know, but you know, stuff happens. Uh, we were fortunate. We were, we were fortunate to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, he is going to be, uh, he's an all conference. He's a potential all conference, first team all conference player. He's got, he's got that kind of talent. Uh, he looked, he looked six, the part. Four, he, flashed, like, he flashed immediately. I mean, as soon as he was in the game, yeah. I felt bad for that left tackle because uh, it was it was a mismatch. So, yeah. um, uh, uh, DT Glover, I thought uh, looked looked really good uh, on the outside at one of the defensive end spots. Um, uh, I, I, uh, he he to me was he to me. I, I thought last year he was he was he was going to have a great year, and I think some injuries and things uh, slowed him down. He he had a lot of little nagging injuries and things that slowed him down. But I think now that you see, he's a different ball player when he's completely healthy. So I think he's going to be a I think he's going to be an outstanding player uh, for us this year. Uh, Rashad Purnell. Uh, Purnell. Uh, another defensive end. Our defensive ends in this in this defensive lineman that we're running. Our defensive ends are really really good, um, and uh, and we got some depth at that position. Uh, you know, uh, Henry Daniel. We got some we got some depth. We got some depth. But we got some players. Um, you know, Henry uh, Daniel. He was one of the major guys. And I swear, listen, I, I follow social media. I'm on. I follow these guys still. And uh, Janoris Robertson, I think he's still floating out there, waiting for, waiting for something to land. But I'm telling you. Well, he's he he, he signed with um what's a Minot State out of Minnesota grad school. I think I think I think yeah I think that's where I think. I I know I know he got like an offer from him. I didn't know if he actually committed. I don't. I, yeah, I I saw I saw the offer on social media that. Yeah, um, thank you. Reconsider, yeah. man. <laughs> Come back. Well, home, hey, you know, yeah, hey, yeah. you know, uh, Ross is going to be fluid. The, the portal for football opened up today, so yeah. I think there's already like twelve hundred guys in the portal on the first day. That's rough, man. <laughs> so you know, uh, you, can, you can never tell. Uh, that's like going. Uh, to a, that's like going to a singles bar. There's only like two two women in the whole bar. <laughs> like you got, you got <laughs> this is slim. Gonna have some sore feet. You're gonna have sore feet by the end of the night. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I, but defensively, uh, it was it was it was good to see Aaron Harris back. Uh, Aaron Harris, to me, he and Ty Williams, that's the core of that defensive secondary. Those two guys, um, those two oh. guys have been through the wars. See, um, see, see I'm, I'm a, I gotta say, I gotta say, I like Aaron Harris. I like Ty. Those guys, yeah. don't get me wrong, but man, yeah, uh, for the second year in a row, I. I came away from that spring game wondering what's he gonna get. Yeah, <laughs> what are they gonna let deuce. the deuce get loose? Because Stephen Davis the second, uh, the deuce. He was wearing number nineteen. Uh, actually, let me let's yeah. go let's, let's go ahead and show until until we get some people who want to join. Show let me show some video. 
But he, in the first drive of the game, he uh, broke on the ball. He looked like, um, dare I say, uh, uh, Mac McCain. <laughs> the way he, the, he, 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 he stayed in his drop and exploded to the ball and made a, 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 a first down saving tackle. But uh, I thought Deuce, I thought uh, Stephen Davis' second played great again. Um, uh, I, I just can't wait to see if he can go ahead and win a job because I he's he looks he's six one, he can run. He looks like a prototypical DB to me. So uh, I, I I think the sky's the limit. But let me go ahead and uh, see if I can find a video of some of this this action we had on there Saturday. So we uh the first the first drive of the game. Uh, Everybody was wondering who's going to start a quarterback because you know Fonbe came in with a lot of fanfare. We had him on the show um, a couple weeks ago. My man Ant Roy bet me fifty dollars that it was going to be Fonbe was going to be the first quarterback to run the field, and uh, I haven't seen I haven't seen Troy since, man. <laughs> so if y'all go if y'all y'all in the Concord, tell Troy I want my damn money, fifty dollars. So. But uh, uh, to his chagrin, uh, KJ White, the incumbent, was actually the first quarterback. And I, I actually yeah. heard he's been having a really good camp. Um, yeah, he's yeah, he's been really good in spring ball. Yeah, they say he he's quiet really, out. He's, all, he's mature. He quiet out maturity. All outside, all, maturity. He quiet out all all the outside noise. Just kept his nose, his head down, nose to grind, and he's been balling out. And uh, so he was he was QB one on Saturday. At least the first quarterback on the field. So let me show you some of uh, that first drive of the game. Here you go. Is that clear for you guys? Let me know if it's fuzzy. You know, on my internet sometimes. Is that good for you, Craig? Number 35. Yeah, you're good. You're good? All right. So this is that first drive with uh, KJ White. Got a little drop there from a uh, Monte Jones, I believe, number three. And this is a uh, Graves, man. And, Dude. He's in he's midseason form already. Yeah, five yards. Yeah, yeah he's, he's lost weight from last year. He's much quicker, I thought, in the spring game than he was uh, a year ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, much, much quicker getting through the hole and, and breaking it, breaking out into the, in, into the open space. Yeah, he, but he was always a dancing bear. He always had very quick feet. So you know, I'm not surprised. Yeah, by that. yeah, the feet were there, but I, I think the, I think the, I think the slimming down has, has really added to the speed because he, yeah. he's looking more and more like he did uh, coming out of uh, George Washington Danville. High School in Danville. Yeah, yeah. It look, he looks more like that. What I saw on, on his huddle film when we first brought him in. Okay. Brings up second down and eight for the Aggies. And one thing, one thing quick too, you always try to get into the mind of the, the person who's orchestrating these uh this offense. So uh one thing about uh David Marsh, my namesake, when he was at Texas Southern, they said he ran a lot of trips packages. So he, he he's he's big on getting the defense to spread wide to commit to like the, the field side, and he'll kind of throw some of the plays back to the boundary to the short side of the field. And I, you know, we saw we saw a little bit of that. I mean, he mixed it up pretty good. And of course, because of the spring game, the uh, they're not going to do a whole bunch of exotic stuff, especially in the passing attack. Nope. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to be doing scissor routes and things like that. It's, you know, um, I think it's like about four or five. You got three routes combinations. You run the you run the uh, curl, a, a dig, and a fly. That's about all you're going to get. Um, but we we had a, we had one uh, like mesh route with the, with tight end, but. You know, it, it was pretty vanilla, but uh, I think we still see that um, David Marsh is still trying to put his fingerprint on his offense. And uh, one thing we did not see a lot of is offside penalties and pre-snap stuff. Everything was pretty smooth. Everybody knew where they needed to go and what time they needed to do it. So, yeah, we only had two penalties uh, on the during the entire uh, scrimmage. So, uh, I think that speaks well. We had a one late hit and one offside yeah. penalty, and that was it. Yeah. So this is third down here. Oh, yeah, look. Woo! Now that, now that was Deuce. So, so go back. I want to show you how he just broke on that ball. Hopefully, I can pick it up right there. So, look, look, look at him. He's he's in, it was third and five or third and three or whatever, and he's you know he's 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 off the he's on the, he's on the far side of the field up there. He backpedals, but he recognizes what it is, and, and look how he just puts that foot in the ground. And immediately explodes. 
Mac, that's Mac McCain right there. That is Mac McCain. To Wesley Graves. And so that was the first drive for uh, the offense and uh, and Fomby. And I don't know, excuse me, KJ White. So he, uh, you know, he he, he had had the punt on his first attempt, but he, uh, you know, he 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 looked pretty comfortable back there. Um, and what, what so what what's what's the what's the deal with with KJ? His his thing is what just accuracy, improving his accuracy, just 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 proving the reading defense. What what what's the what's the goal for KJ White twenty twenty four? Um, just being comfortable, being, being comfortable. comfortable. And and not and not, not trying to do too much. Usually when you have a usually we have a young quarterback who has real good skills like him. Uh, sometimes yeah. they feel like, and uh, sometimes they feel like they have to they have to force something or make a play. Right. And uh, uh, but I didn't I did not really see that. Uh, I saw a little bit of that last year when when uh, when he you know was thrown into the fire, uh, and. Uh, uh, and that's understandable because uh, a, a kid straight out of high school go, going to Division One level play is going to feel like you know I got to make something happen. What the biggest thing he'll have to learn as a sophomore, uh, uh, and I and I, I think he I think he showed that he's learn he's learning those lessons uh, from last Saturday, is that you let the game come to you, uh, and then. Uh, uh, you pick your spots. You know, you don't you uh, don't try to force don't try to force things and, and make the smart play, not the spectacular play. The spectacular plays will come yeah. if you make the smart play, and that's that's the biggest it's, it's, that's the biggest thing that that quarterbacks that separate the you know the the average quarterback from the really good ones is 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 recognizing down distance and situation. And, and that's uh, and that, that's probably hard to do too when you got that much athleticism because mm -hmm. you because you got a home it run is. in your back pocket anytime you anytime right. you, you need it anytime you get a little bit of daylight. We saw that we, we, in the next drive. I'll show you that he had Happy you know, he, he flashed. Good lord, <laughs> that boy can accelerate. So so I know like you know you kind of want the play develop. You want to read everything and let guys get downfield. But, but once you feel a little pressure and you see some opening, like man, let me go ahead and hit this home run real quick and I'll get y'all next time. So yeah, it's a little. A balance, uh, you know, you gotta juxtapose those two yeah. things uh, to to play that game. But uh, so let's so so he came off the field, and then we um, we went on the next thing, the next drive to uh, Justin Fomby. So Fomby is our big time um, transfer quarterback from Houston Christian, six three. I think he's gonna be, he's a graduate, so he's he's an elder statesman. He's been just, he's been about around the block once one or two times, and. Uh, he he came in second, but um, I don't think he looked too bad. I think you know I think like like you say he needs to get needs to get more comfortable. This was uh, Justin Fomby, believe his first drive. And that's that's Kendrick Christian. I thought he had a really good spring game. Oh yeah, I think I think I think all the bats did. I think all the bats, yeah, I think all the bats that, performed well on Saturday. Yeah, you saw that hit. Um, that I, to me, I don't know. Yeah. If, if it's a game, they gonna still throw their flag. I think it was kind of like, uh, I don't know. I, I think you can get away with that some games, but you know they threw the flag. You just gotta be super careful. I, I don't know if it was when I looked over it. When I saw it at the game, I thought it was a bonehead play. But when I went and looked at the film afterwards, it didn't, it didn't seem quite egregious. So I'm not sure what they did after after the game in the film study. Did they did they get on him for that? You know, you don't want to get 15 yard penalty, but it was really close to to a line of scrimmage. So uh, that was that was crazy. And then uh, Fomby got kind of played by some bad snaps after. So you know, that was a little snap. And he kind of threw out the yeah. pocket. Yeah, I, I think people have. I think people have to uh, need, need to stop when, they, when people talking about. Uh, I, I saw some things earlier this week on 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 the uh, board. Uh, yeah. where people were talking about what the offensive line is porous and this, that, and the other thing. You have to remember four guys. Four of the offensive linemen who are projected starters for this fall did not play Saturday. So you were looking at you were looking at red shirts and and your second team people, and I think that's really what the coaches went in to to, to really focus on was uh, not the known quantities, 
but the unknown quantities, because you got to, if you look at our roster, we've turned over a lot of roster spots. We got a lot of new people on this football team, uh, mid stand with her, with, with some of the veterans who've been here for a while. So it was more of an, a, a talent evaluation day, yeah. more so than an X's and O's day. Yeah, I can dig that. I can dig that. So, uh, that was, uh, a little, I think it's probably lost a couple yards on that on that little pass to the to the flanker. Fomby's back in there. Another bad snap. That ended up being a loss. Defense flying around. Brings up third down and 13 for the offense. Bad snap. He's trying to make something happen here. And like I say, you know, he didn't have to run full speed, but he's not slow. One thing about all our quarterbacks, we end up playing, I want to say, five quarterbacks last Saturday, Craig. Uh, yeah. None of, them, none of them, like I was telling you, none of them have uh, molasses in their socks. All of them dudes can move. All five guys have <laughs> have some wheels. So, but, but none of them have wheels like KJ White. And I'm, I'm going to show you on this on this drive. Yeah, like this, that dude just accelerates, man. So this is so uh no, I'm go to KJ KJ's second drive. Here it is. Let me show you KJ's second drive after a punt. I think that's Graves is getting five yards of carry still. He's making it happen. Look at this, look at this, look at this. I mean he's like the closest thing I've seen to like Kyler Murray. Where you just if I need 10 yards, I can go ahead and get him. Mm-hmm. So Blizzard, that's, that's Blizzard in there. He's another Virginia guy. Uh, yeah. And he, he came on late last year. He, he's going to be a problem. Uh, <laughs> he's going to be a major the, headache. A, a major behind, headache. Uh, Jones on that. He dropped it. And, uh, but I think Jones is probably still going to come back. Then you got uh, Hardy on third and three, jumped offside, stuff a new, new first down. We got a sack. So so they had a real quick whistle. Um, they As soon as you got close to the quarterback, it was, it was considered a sack. Look at that throw. And uh, let, me go, let me go back to that. That's, get your feet set, throw a strike. Like if he can run and make a, a pass in the middle of the field like that, that's going to scare a lot of defenses. Look at that burst. I mean, just the, the, the possibility of having a read option with KJ White and Shamik Blizzard is. Oh, you know, it's it's probably in the playbook, but you you weren't going to see it on Saturday. Crazy man, just the way he got around that corner. They're like, I feel bad for them 42 Malik Jacobs because look at him. He's like, hey, I'm getting you. Ah, uh, never, never mind. <laughs> like, he had the angle. Hey, listen, he, it was just like Norfolk State. Look, it was like Norfolk State. He had the yeah. angle for about a split second. Like, right right there, my money would be on the linebacker. If I'm, if I'm just a, you know, if I didn't know anything, if I look at this freeze frame, I'm like, okay. Yeah, you know, it's a quarterback. You got a middle linebacker. Yeah. He's he's got a perfect angle on him. We got what about seven yards of distance. He could yeah. definitely get him. All right. And and look, what even close? <laughs> and that, I mean, that's 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 no knock on 42. That's like that's how it's gonna be with the opposing defenses this year, too. He is just that good. Yeah. He is fast. Kevin Wright on the keeper. Like no, a lot. Of, somebody, somebody asked me what I what I thought of KJ KJ running the football. I said he reminds me of Patrell Troutman back in the days oh, when uh, yeah. Alvin White, Alvin White was uh was a Bethune Cookman running the wide bone. Wide Patel Troutman, yeah, yeah. When they had Patel Troutman and got him on that corner, it was it was game over. Uh, and he reminds me a lot of Patel Troutman. 
uh, his his acceleration, his ability to get to the outside so fast, you don't have you don't have time to react. That's a good comp, Patel Trout. Now, who was the guy they had after Patel Trout? They had two quarterbacks. Alan Super. Alex Super. Alan Super. Super, <laughs> Super duper, because that dude was oh, he he was nasty too. They oh, they gave us some issues, man. I tell you. But uh, yeah, yeah, that so, white bone was tough. <laughs> that white bone was hell. <laughs> you, yeah, you know, well, we handled it. We probably only team in the back yeah. in the MAC that could really handle Bethune Cookman's offense because they were Hayes. You know, Bill were, Hayes had an answer for the white bone. He had an answer for the Gulf Coast offense. So that was two teams. Yeah, he if he if you gave him like a year, he'll he'll figure out a plan to stop that stuff. But so so right now we're in the red zone, and uh, you know, one of our issues last year. Was closing that deal, you know. We was we get close sometimes, and we you know shoot ourselves in the foot, miss a field goal, whatever. So we got to get points when they're there. So let's see how we look in the red zone on the second uh, drive of the game, third drive of the game. Second down and six for the offense. Left foot, back shoulder, bam. Man, jump all you, jump all you back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, forget the super freaks, jump ball. You, hey, look, and I'm so happy because you know that dude was much maligned. He got so much criticism last year. I'm talking about Jakari Caldwell. I think Craig, you would call him hands like feet. Is that what you uh, was calling him on social media? You say you say he had hooves on his on his, on his, on his wrist. So he he was getting beat up uh. by the fan base, and I'm glad to see him respond. He had a really good spring game, man. Um, and I'll show you later. When that uh, court, when that unfortunate incident where the kid got uh, got his bell rung and had to go to the stretch. Yeah, Terry and George. Yeah, Terry yeah. and George. That was a actually a, a big time third down pickup uh, on a on like a um, a slant route by Jerkari Caldwell. He caught that ball and then got kind of tackled into uh, George unbeknownstly. But so he so said he was out there making plays in the middle of the field, it's like you see you see in the red zone. He, he's a six three six four guy out of the University of South Carolina, you know he has the pedigree. It was always just getting that focus and that confidence, I think. Um, yeah. Hopefully Doug can get here sometime tonight. Doug, Doug's always been big on Jakari Call. When I, when, I, when I was ready to get, you know, Caldwell out of here, Doug was like, nah, that dude has talent. Just wait. It's, it's The life's going to come on. So I think this year might be the year for Caldwell. Hopefully, hopefully so, because we definitely can use him. Uh, that offense, and then uh, we got we had a, a money sighting, uh, uh, Craig. You know, after a year injury yeah there, we got money brown back in the fold and i tell you man he looked yeah good. it was really good i was really happy to see him uh out there saturday and he uh uh even with even with the brace on his on his plant leg he yeah. still can he, he he's still money in the bank when he's kicking the football man I, I feel just i just feel like since if we get the ball inside the four yard line we're gonna get we're gonna get three out of We'll get three, three, three. Hey, and yeah. and there was uh, and like I say, uh, I got this roster from the they were passed on this roster, but it's uh, it was did not be it didn't seem that could be a hundred percent accurate because there were some guys on here, especially the specialists who were not listed. But that we had a, a kicker, um, not Money Brown, but there was a kicker wearing like 23, 24, something like that. And he was kicking the ball almost to the end zone. So we so we got we might have somebody who is a kickoff specialist who can also help out Money Brown uh, on some extra points and short field goals too. So I think we're good there. Um, we got to replace our punter, uh, Brick Brickhouse. Uh, he um, you know he's still rehabbing that knee. Uh, the, but who who just, like I say I don't, they didn't they didn't list him on the roster. But whoever was doing punting for us last Saturday. Was doing a pretty good job too. I was watching the punts and we were getting about you know 40, 45 yards per, per punt. So we looked pretty straight there. Um, so so that was the, the first couple drives from uh, KJ White and um, and and uh, Justin Fonby. So uh, let me let's go back to it. Let's see what else we got here. The next drive was that was Fonby's first drive. His I think his second drive was uneventful. Let me see. That was Christian back there. Then, uh, oh, here's like a nice little pass. Oh, well, it was supposed to be a comeback little screen. It got blown up.
Okay, now here's KJ back again. It's so crazy. You feel pretty good about this line, though? You feel like they were, it's, I mean, um, they obviously were open up some land lanes. Yeah, I mean, again, these, again, these were these were your second. Uh, uh, even though uh, a lot, the, most of the guys who were on the first team offensive line were the number two guys. Uh, most of them were the number, yeah, were the number two guys from the, from the year before. Uh, yeah, I felt I felt like they uh, did a good job. First team offense against second team defense. I think they opened up the holes in the running game. Um, it's a it's it, it's a totally different picture where you you know when you put uh uh Carnes and, and and guys uh uh those guys in there uh uh you know Torian Sharp uh you know you put Sharp in there you put Marino in there then it takes on a whole different atmosphere and like I said those guys didn't play yeah. didn't play Saturday but they'll be playing this fall and then I think you'll see uh, then I think you're going to see an offense that uh, offensive line that's really going to be able to uh, do uh, move some people around and and create space. Uh, so, okay. but yeah, I, I you know like I said uh, the uh, the 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 uh, offense I think the running game I think is in great hands. I think we've got three surefire running backs. Okay, so uh, what we was missing. On. One guy we were missing was Charlie Dixon, right? And like I tell you, yeah, man, we're out, missing. Of sight, out of sight, out of mind, because I mean, these it's gonna be hard to get reps here with with Blizzard, Graves, and um and, and, and Kenji Christian. I mean, you you, you yeah, I think Dixon a, had some off season surgery or something. So okay. I don't, I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but you, yeah, when he gets when when you get him back into the fold. That that is a but that that backfield is loaded uh, with with some with bats that can run over you or around you, and uh, so uh, let, let me let me give a shout out to uh, what was the number nine uh, Michael Gadet from uh, Northwest Guilford here in Greensboro. He he got some shot in the second half of the game, and he made mm -hmm. he had a couple nice carries. So if, if we we're loaded, man. Uh, one thing, yeah, we it, are. We, we got some, we got some guys who can run the ball. Yeah, A and T will always have running backs. We're always going to have quality running backs. Yeah, that has it's been a staple throughout since God back when I was in school. And that's you know we're going back some eons now. Uh, yeah. the, uh, the the we've always had a we always had a great running backs. So that tradition will continue. All right, let's go back to the video. Here goes another great one. Boy. See, he just has that. It's almost like he's riding a bicycle. Yeah. The way he just he just cuts and leans. Oh, I love that. Well, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's a tall guy, and yeah. it doesn't look like he's moving that fast until you try to catch him. Yeah, he goes right by you. Right by you. Yeah, really. The rookie Christian on the carry. Long up there. The There's a couple of numbers on the defensive line that they're really getting matched up. Looks like it was like a 94 in the middle or 54. Who was making some plays? I got to get the I got to get the name on 54, 94. That was at uh, like the defensive tackle spot. He's not. He wasn't listed on the spring game roster, but he was making plays all day. And so, and so that was Farmby, and that was that was the blow that uh, <laughs> that, that, that sent that kid, you know, to the hospital. And I think he made a full recovery afterwards. But uh, let's go. I mean, I don't want to show that hit, hit again. I was wanting to show you uh, the route by. Um, the route by Caldwell. This is third and long. You know, we we've been struggling moving the change with. Uh, this is Farmby's second second third drive. 
he puts his foot down right there in the pocket. So that's 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 a really good look for Fonby and uh and Caldwell. And I mean it, to me it happened not this game, but if you go back to last year, um the of course the last game against Campbell, but before that, I think we played like Rhode Island and mm -hmm. Caldwell was making some great big time catches on third and long in that game too. So something yeah. happened. Caldwell's been on like a three game, including the spring game. He's been on like a three game winning streak where he's been he's been stepping up and making things happen. There we go. That, that's our guy. Let me uh, get out of here real quick. Fresh. What's going Gentlemen. on, man? Gentlemen. <laughs> oh, man. That is, is this thing? Yeah, oh, too. Oh, Congratulations, man. man. Congratulations. You change the colors on us. Oh, what's up, man? <laughs> normally, normally I have these two letters on the interlock and A and T. I got a few more on tonight, man. But you know, oh, we'll get man. It. man, I miss you guys. First of all, I gotta apologize to Aggie Nation uh, for partiness, nah. for and then let me apologize to Craig Turner for having to deal with uh, Samaj Marsh by himself. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Hey, you're looking good, Dougie. Hey, so keep standing for. I'm gonna see the four, the four regalia. Okay. Oh, that's how we got little, little about, the sky, right. pie, new pie. You know, yo to the good noobs, all that. You know. Right. Oh man, it's a big time, man. So, so, this, know, so, man. so, does that explain? Can we say that explains your absence last Saturday? Is would that be a reason for why you weren't in the building? Um, that's fair to say. You know, I don't like to miss too many spring games, but uh, you know, yeah. I was able to chop it up with some fellow Aggies, and um, you know, was still supporting from afar. So, um, all right, well. Try to get caught up, man. You know, I'm back, baby. Back like I never left. Good. Hey, hey, man. We, everybody's been asking about you. Everybody's like, where's Dougie Fresh, man? I'm like, you know, Doug's dudes, man. Doug's dudes. You know, where's that? Where's the shirt? Where's the shirt? Doug's dudes. Hey. Everybody wants to know. Everybody wants to get down with Dougie. So, Doug, so, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still try lamb. I'm still uh, lamb to lamb to lamb to true and blue. But, so, but hey, but can I do any shimmy? Can, can I do a shoulder thing? Is, is that allowed? Okay. We're gonna, we gonna give him, we're gonna give him plenty of shoulders, man. Okay. Plenty of shoulders. <laughs> We work we get the shoulders right, man. You know, I need I need a little bit of uh oil for mine, you know. We oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now the jokes are used to be man. Yeah. Hey, so, so look, when you when you were gone, man, um, I don't know how this happened. I believe Craig must have said something to the wrong person, but there was like a firestorm on social media about some uh band absence or something like that. Did you hear anything about that? You have anything to say about that? Social media, it's it's beyond social media at this point. It's it's oh no, it's Craig, now, Craig, you know, wait, what are you doing, Craig? I've been stopping I ain't done crap. Times, <laughs> I've been stopping times. Matter of fact, the last comment I got about it was about 30 minutes ago. So you know, you mm -hmm. still simmering. Craig, I said you always know when things are going pretty good in Aggie Land when uh when my when my co-host over here gets to talking about uh some band issues, you know. Because a lot has happened since I've been gone, Craig, and for the most part, most of us been yeah. really good. So, uh, you know, we got plenty yeah. to talk to catch up on. But I knew when I saw uh, saw some of those talks, man. I said, "Oh no, here we go." And that that is yeah, really. But I mean, <laughs> doesn't take long. But, but you know what, though, they uh, just to give them a free plug, they are actually in the middle of what they call the spring concert series, right? And uh, actually, I'm gonna be. <laughs> If y'all got a bone to pick with me, I ain't, I ain't ducking. I'm going to be at one of those concerts. Me and my wife looked at it. We're going to try to be at the one on, I think it's March. The, it's, it's next week, I think. It's in, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to go there, the one at Harrison Auditorium. Because, uh, you know, all jokes aside, those those kids are super talented. And they give a great performance. It's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like going to the Tanger Center, you know. You're it's a, lot, a lot more affordable. but And uh, probably better quality. So, so uh, if you guys get a chance, uh, go out and, and support the Blue and Gold March Machine. They they're doing um, different segments of the brand. So they have like the winds, and they like to have like the what you call the saxophones. So everybody's kind of breaking down, and then they have one big band blowout at the end. They bring it all together, and it's like another super concert. So um, if you go go to Blue Death Valley, like, like everybody keeps telling me, I keep saying there is no outlet that supports the Blue and Gold March Machine more than we do. And if you can find one. I'm guess what? I'm giving you uh, some Blue Death gear tonight. If you can name one outlet that promotes the Blue and Gold March Machine more than BlueDeathValley.com and all our digital platforms, it's, you can't find one. I, I promise you. 
it's, it does not exist. So all the hate I be getting, understand, due to knowledge, we are the number one champion of Bruno Gold Marching Machine. That's a fact. But uh, so Dougie, we got to talk football though, because I know you. Uh, unless you get, unless you got a cane that you want to do some twirling with, you can you can take over at any time if, if you if you get to, if you get to feel the need. Right. But uh, mm-hmm. well, that, 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 you might. Okay, so let's that, break down some film because well, uh, I sent I just sent you the video. I know you were out of commission, but I sent you the video. And these guys are balling, man. You know, um, we had we had. Uh, KJ White come back. He was the first the starting quarterback, and then uh, Justin Fomby made made his uh, he made his presence felt. Um, so let me get yeah. Let me see if this is a good one. So after halftime, we came back and we're playing shows already, but uh, we were we were we were mixing up a little bit. Let's check out number 83, Dougie. That's a tight end. Oh. You don't want that one back. That was, that was a bad pass, Bobby. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, Shamik Blizzard, man? Well, you know, I've been a big Shamik Blizzard fan from the start. Uh, yeah. The minute I turned on this high school tape, actually, because I yeah. saw how versatile he was. I mean, the guy runs, he, he blocks, he pass blocks. Um, he does a little bit of everything. He's not afraid to stick his head in there. But what I like most about him is he's a downhill runner. Yes. Uh, quick to the hole. He just seems to have that extra burst. Um, you know, you can attribute some of that to his track speed. We know he was a, a fantastic indoor 60-meter sprinter. Um, I think he even ran the 200 as well, four by one. But um, he's he's a he's a fast kid, and um, it, it shows on the field as well. I think he's just as fast on the football field, and um, um, he's one of those guys that I like to say he, he's a running back. I don't know if he can play any other position on the field. I think we even lined him up at Gunner a couple times last year on special teams, but yeah. he is a running back. That's what he does. That, that's what he looks like when, when you hand him the ball and you get out of the way. So I think he fits any scheme, but particularly I think he fits some of the things we some of the things we've done in the past uh, with our run game and what coach Mattis likes to do up front. So, you know, look for him to make some plays. I think he's a perfect compliment uh, to some of the other guys we already have in the backfield. All right. So Dougie, I'm going to put you on the spot. You, you got to put on your running back coach hat. How do you keep all these guys happy? Cause everybody knows their worth. They know that they can be a bail cow running back in any division one offense. How do you divvy up the, the carries and get, you know, uh, Kenji Christian, his enough for him to feel like he, you know, he he's being used well. And then you got Graves who has done nothing. Well, Graves has done nothing to uh, to 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 um to lose his spot. And then you know, I got this, you know, red shirt freshman or well, he might be a sophomore. I think they they used his big burns red shirt last year. But uh, you got. I mean, how you how do you how do you manage all those that that talent and still Keep everybody happy. Well, I, mean, I think we are ways away from the old workhorse style running backs. I mean, you, you okay. see those running back by committees, three headed monster style approaches yeah. uh, for years now, kind of all across the board. And we've had success with that with uh, in numerous years with guys. And we've been able to pass the torch down to the next guy. But we've kind of been in this holding pattern lately where we, we know we got three or four guys ready to go in a stable, which is always good to have good depth. I mean, injuries happen in football, and that's a position where you're going to have some wear and tear. Um, but it's also good to have guys that are versatile. And we've got guys that can do a little bit of everything. And I think uh, the grave digger, William Graves, kind of sets the tone. You know, he's he's the he's the leader. He's the old head out of the group. Uh, you know what Kenji Christian can do, you know, in his pedigree. Uh, but Blitz has just kind of been waiting in the wings, man. He, he's a kid that sat back and knew that he wasn't going to get the lion's share of the carries as a freshman, uh, but definitely use that time to get better. And I think you saw in that last game, you know, how, how interested the coaches are in his future that they actually gave him the opportunity to carry the ball yeah. and, and start. And he, and he played well, and he showed the burst that I thought he had and what he could offer, and he actually showed some of that, I think, up at Rhode Island. Um, so he's he's geared, ready to go. <clears throat> and it's nice to have a guy that you know you can plug in from day one, and um, he's ready to go with fresh legs. There's another guy we played. Uh, is actually a tall running back, 6'2", 
190, uh, Cameron uh, Dale Ripple, Dale Ripple from uh, yeah, Dale Ripple from Maryland. He uh, he, he got he got some action in the first half, I think, and uh, I think he missed up a, a, blitz, a blitz pickup. You know, almost got his quarterback killed, but uh, he, he looks like he might be somebody who has a good future here at ANT. So let me let me finish running through these highlights. Like I say, Dougie, they had a quick trigger, man. Like the the, the referees, they were blowing that whistle quick, so they so they, they consider that uh, a sack. But you know, I, I think in the in the real game that like, he might be able to get that off without being on the ground. So yeah, so that was uh that was another drive there. We we go back to it, but uh, like I say, oh, we got another, we got well, Troy, welcome to the show, my main man, uh, hey. Andy Roy. Hey, I want my I want my fifty dollars, brother. Um, and uh, you don't you don't get no free, you don't get no blue depth gear. Could you could have got this smooth <laughs> Reaper cat, but you're your uh, long time contributor to the show, so you don't get nothing free. So only first timers. Try, we're trying to get these guys to have some have some confidence. Come on, the show. But uh, Troy, what's going on, man? Your, your, your audio. Come on now, Troy. Please, man. Th this is this is why you don't get no blue depth gear. <laughs> <laughs> Are you good now, Troy? You you want to use sign language? Oh, boy. Okay, Troy, I tell you, you're killing me, man. We can't hear you, Troy. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna kick you out. You uh, <laughs> go go use your uh your wife's computer. Use your wife's computer. That's the one. That all, that's the only thing that works. Is your little tablet, Troy? <laughs> got this little tablet, man. You got like a memory of like you know. Like three seconds, and then they always get off. <laughs> so, 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 so we we on we gonna kick you off. We gonna tell you to go to the public library. I think they got some open late at night. And, uh, try to yeah, but uh, you know, good vibes, man. Good vibes. So that's, that was A and T Roy. He owes me fifty bucks. Some things never change. I you see. Know, I tell you, man. Twenty twenty four. We used to, yeah, Troy. <laughs> Troy knows how to derail a nice show. That's that's one of his his gifts. <laughs> Y'all check, check out Troy on social media too, man, because he is like you know the uh, most fanatical member of Aggie Nation. He's always putting out the this week in Aggie Land list of activities, and you know that's one of NC Doug. I, I try to introduce this word to this to the lexicon called synergy, right? And I got the idea from from Troy because every week he talks about all these sports that are going on all throughout you know the nation represent ANT. I'm like, wow, we got a whole bunch of stuff. We got to get stuff on the same page, let people know about it, right? And so I want, like, like for instance, there's going to be a big baseball series this week at War Memorial Stadium. The War Boys, um, uh, yeah, and the next guest we get gets a free War Boys shirt. So if you if you want a War Boys shirt and you don't want to pay the $29.99, whatever you call it, we're selling it for, come on the show, be a first-time guest, and we'll give you a free War, War, War Boys shirt. Sure, and that's like super exclusive. But um, they got a big series, baseball series against Delaware. Why not have the football team, softball, whatever they got a game track? I want everybody to support each other. So we we got to spread the word and get you know, as as bad as War Memorial Stadium is, the, the the seats that are not broken should be filled with some ANT fans and students and, and athletes. So we got to keep getting. You know, bring bit bridging gaps, bringing folks together. Hey, but, uh, now, you yeah, know, I get on here my first day back on here, and you still beating up old War Memorial Stadium. I, and I understand the restore the war campaign, <laughs> the war. I like that. But you know, the grass is green, it's looking good. We got new padding in the outfield. When you when you head up to Wilkesboro, North Carolina, North Wilkesboro, yeah. and they give you that, um. NASCAR All-Star Race, you don't hear those folks complaining about the holes in the seat. They just talk about the tradition and the history there. Where, where, where's the love for, you know? I do love it. I go to the games. I create the War Boys movement, but you still need a tetanus shot every time you go to that stadium because that place is, <laughs> yes, it got so much rust and rebar. I don't, you know, they got some issues, man. You know, Earl Hilton said, 
him and Dr. Pompey said that they were going to re re renovate that stadium as soon as the season's over. So uh, we'll we'll have a tracker. We'll, we'll have like a live cam facing that stadium to make sure that we see some construction vehicles as soon as the season's over. But we're going to give Troy one more shot. And I'll tell you, boy, this is like the most important <laughs> this is the most important moment in Troy's life because uh, if, if this doesn't work out, he he might he, – man, I don't want to tell you what I'm going to do to him. T. Roy, you good? Yep. Oh, my man. Cut, you can't do in the clutch. You can't do in the clutch. There you go. Hey, T. Roy, what's going on? That's good, man. Let's, let's talk. Hey, man, look, listen, my wife's computer, man, it has like six different things you got to do to make the camera and the sound work. But, but, but before I say anything with that – Doug, man, I, you know, when I first saw yeah. your announcement on social media, I was like, man, I think 94 went and tried to get him some backup. He I was like, 94 was a crew, man. <laughs> nah, you know what? But then I remembered his legacy, his daddy is capital yeah. of all capitals. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, you still my 1911 brother there, Troy. So you know, it's it's still love, man. Yeah, man. I'm gonna go on social media and give you a congratulations. I was holding out until this show tonight, but I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do it here in a second. <laughs> How about that, man? I appreciate it. I appreciate it. But yeah, 94. You know, he's a static man. He's he's definitely got a, another uh, brother lying down, lying down beside him on that line of scrimmage, man. So we we're trying to move some things around. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, Thriller. Um, yeah. What fifty dollars are you talking about? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. First of all, first of all, you're too old to be deceitful. Okay, <laughs> listen. You, you said it loud, like you know, you, you Troy. I mean, Doug. You you know how Troy is. He gets to a stadium and he just you know gonna embarrass you and everybody else near, near you by being loud and obnoxious. He's like, hey, Smudge, the Thriller, Thriller. It's gonna be Bobby. He's the first quarterback. I'll bet you fifty dollars. I'm like, sit down, sir. I'm, I'm trying to watch the game. Now it's fifty dollars. You owe me. I'm like, all right, whatever. Just, just, just leave me alone. Whatever you need, I'll pay you hundred dollars right now. Leave me the hell alone. So he said fifty dollars. Bobby's gonna be the quarterback, and then you know, KJ White, like I told, him, was coming out, and then I ain't seen him since. This is the first time I've seen him since he, he bet me fifty dollars. <laughs> but hey, don't, don't don't believe the hype. Uh, you know that's true. Hey, yeah, but guys, we got to take a break because we, we actually got a, a first-time guest to the show. And so this guy is going to get some Blue Death gear. My man, hey, you, uh, unmute yourself. You got Ooh. it, brother. How you doing? What's going on, man? How you doing? I'm doing great, bro. I can't complain. Look I've here. been watching you, got... you guys. I've been, you know, I stay, <laughs> I keep I keep you guys in the background. You know, I don't. I don't try to come up here too often, man. I got this business that I'm trying to run, this fuel cell business, right? Listen. And it's just killing me right now. So you know how that goes. So look, this this is one of the most uh, successful entrepreneurs in the uh, Aggie Nation. Um, where you, where you, are you still based in Texas? You still in Texas? No, I'm in Savannah right now. You're in Savannah, okay. Yeah. And uh, he does, man, he does a lot. So I, I'll let him tell you all about it, but he's, he's moving and shaking. When, when it comes to like, Having a chance to to do some NIL stuff on the heavy level, we're gonna have to call Aggie Groove. Cause Aggie Groove might can help out, uh, may help us get a, a pass rushing DN or something. He might he might be able to scratch off a check. He's he's one of those guys who, who's in that tax bracket. But uh, yo, Groove, you've been a big time supporter of the of the of the, the website for years, man. And guess what, guys? Guess what? We go we gonna go to this a little bit later. Uh, this is twenty twenty four, right? So this is actually the 20th year, the 20th anniversary of Blue Death Valley being right. online. So we're going to do a lot of cool stuff. I got, um, I got, you know, my, my mind is always thinking. I got, I got like a dope idea every five seconds. So I got a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to be doing to commemorate that. And we're going to be giving back to the people who made that possible, the fuel of our website, which is people like Aggie Groove and Troy and everybody else like that. So, but Groove, did you get a chance to, did you get a chance to go to the, to the spring game? No, I did not. not. I, I'm 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 working too hard, man. I'm trying to get my nil money together, man. Exactly. Business. That's hey, what well, I'm trying to do right now. You know that. So listen. So let's talk about that for a second, because you're somebody who's probably gonna get a, a solicitation phone call from somebody A and T about donating. Do you think that how, how, is that like territory that we can actually thrive in? Um, are we biting off too much? A little bit more than we can chew. What do you feel about that NIL when it comes to this? You know, raising well, on, on well, you know, when I was at um, 
Raytheon, um, no, Rockwell Collins, I was the executive uh, director for all the campus of recruiting. Hmm. In the year that I was there, um, I made sure that um, ANT got more money than any other company uh, out there, right. you know, and but the the key to to me the key to to doing what we need to do is corporate sponsorships, right? If we can get corporate sponsorship, the individual sponsorships are all good and well, and it's okay. Yeah. But it's the corporate guys that you know will come in to, to do the big time money, man. And that's what I, I mean. You know, one of my legacies, hopefully, is to be able to contribute to that 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 worthy cause. To be honest with you. So, so I think the first step is we got to actually get a corporate development officer or office of people yeah. to, to go ahead and do that. We can't just say we need it. We got to actually have somebody who has skin in the game, whose paycheck is dependent. You know, my wife's a real estate uh, agent. You know, if she don't sell houses, we don't eat. I don't make no money, right? So, right. so if my wife don't sell houses, then, you know, <laughs> I'm broadcasting from the public library for real. So, so, <laughs> so, so we got to have somebody with an incentive to actually go out there and get those corporate dollars and all that stuff, right? So, right. right. So, and it so, can't be an educator, by the way. You don't need an educator in that spot. You need right. somebody that's able to go out there and build relationships and talk to people and understand from the corporate world all the way and and and, and uh, interact and interact with Craig, you know, and kind of bring it all together. And if you do that, you, you'll be very successful. So um, what do you think, man? Uh, you think this season, because I know they announced that new NIL collective, right? So right. you think we're going to be rolling like earnestly? Do you think we want to be able to get up and running by this year? Or are we you know, still kind of a couple, couple I, I think it's going to take, I, I, you know, you're talking about black folks, man. You, I'm telling you, it's <laughs> going to take a couple of years, man. I'm telling you that already. You know, just let's be honest, man. That's why I'm trying yeah. to get up and running, man, so I can make a so that my company can make a um, significant contribution to that, man. That's that's what I, I dream about every day, to be honest with you. But I'm no, it's gonna get a couple years. Can, can you give a free plug real quick and talk and say the name of your company? Because you because you own it now. Because you I know you were you were uh, uh, kind of uh, a founding member that you took over. Can you, can you say what the company's name is and what your 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 business does? Yeah. Um, okay. So. Um, the name of our company is Special Power Sources. I'm one of Craig's boys. I was back in school where Craig was. I remember when he was at the a t register and everything. He yeah, remembers yeah, me yeah. too, right? Um, yeah. But what we do is renewable renewable energy, uh, solid oxide fuel cells. And <clears throat> it's all of this, um, this stuff that reduces the carbon footprint and greenhouse gases and that type of thing right now. And, and that's just keeping it real simple. What I'm most proud of this year yeah. is that we won two NASA contracts. So NASA, Gee, NASA, yeah. yeah. So I'm telling you, man, I'm trying to get there. I'm really trying to get there. Really trying to get there. So that's what we do. You know, I don't want to go into all the details, but that's what we kind of do. All right. So y'all do anything like like as far as like putting a colony on Mars or anything? I'm I'm, I'm interested. So you know, <laughs> let me let me know if I can sign up for that. But look, like in the meantime, hey, hey in the meantime, group. Uh, when you get back to the bluedeathvalley.com, the, the message board, shoot me a DM and give me your shirt size. Shirt size. Okay. I'm, right. I'm gonna send you uh, a Reaper. This is what I'm talking about. You gotta be careful because you can't wear this into you know the inner city bad neighborhoods. Somebody's gonna rob you for it. This is hey, but you know, you know, I got yeah. one of the original Reaper shirts too, right? Oh, man. I know, but th but this, this is, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, this is uh, you, you. If you combine both of those, this, you're gonna be really killing it. So, yeah. so I, I owe you some I owe you some gear because you made the, the leap and came on the show for the first time. And uh, as soon as you get as soon as you get off, text me your um your your, your address and your, your shirt size and everything. I'm gonna take care of it. Hey, but I want Doug and all the brothers yeah. to know, Troy yeah. to know. I still got my groove stuff in the background, by the way. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There you that's go. <laughs> hey, no, hey, hey, we got two groovers. We got you and Dex. I think there's two groovers we got on the on the site. And that's Facebook Three. too. No. Three. Who's the third? Who's yeah. third? Yeah. Aggie Bur Blackie. Lewis. Yeah, yeah. We got y'all got a couple groups out there. Oh, Blackie, Aggie Blackie. Blackie. Okay. Okay. Blackie is Blackie's a, a groove also. Matter of fact, okay. the story about him is 
when um, they got ready to induct Sparrow Bird into the Hall of Fame and everything. Yeah. I had this one picture, you know, that's, you know, a part of my signature and everything. And I looked at it and I looked at the, what the grooves had did for the, for, uh, I think it was for the, um, to put something into the program, the Hall of Fame program. And it was the picture that, that I had given that came off the site. I was like, Aggie Blackie, I can't believe you did that. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> we, 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 we definitely, we definitely gotta get bird on the show, man. That's, that's oh yeah, that's, you gotta get bird, man. I can tell yeah. you that my senior year at NT, Bird and I were roommates. Oh, oh nice. Some stories, boy. I, I can imagine. I can <laughs> imagine <some> stories. <laughs> that tandem, boy. That was that was crazy. And he was my, by the way, he was my line brother too. Also, good deal, man. Good deal. Hey, um. Hey, let me make sure you all understand. Aggie Groove and Doug, um, the Q still run this. Oh, <laughs> we know that. We, we knew you were going to say that. You, you yeah. knew that. You knew that was coming. All right, Groove. So, hey, we don't let you go, but I definitely owe you something. So, hit, don't forget now. Hit me all back right. up on, on, a, on, a, on a personal message, and we're going to uh, we're gonna definitely uh, send something your way. I appreciate all your support, man. Yeah, and by the way, um, yeah. last thing is, is that, I did not know how to set up the Blue Death Valley um, um, March Madness, but I got it done and everything. And I guess we got Super Day one. That I guess. Huh? Yeah, I got. If somebody, if if, if anybody reached Super Day, tell him I got a, a whole. It's right there. I got a whole prize pack, and it's a good one too. He's got like shirts and hats, everything. I'm, I'm waiting for him to send me his address. So, uh, yeah, actually, I might do something for everybody who participated in that tournament because. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling like Santa Claus tonight, man. So we, well, I'm gonna think about it. I'm gonna think about it. We gonna we gonna take I, care I can, everybody. It's, it's I can tell you, I, I watched your sons, um, cause I watched it every day, and I watched yeah. your sons and how, what they were doing and everything. And Nick was doing really good one time. He had picked Duke, I think, and your other son just he just bombed out real quick. My, my oldest, my oldest son finished last, and Nick finished like fourth. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and Nick told my oldest son about it every every time he saw him, so he, he was good, good stuff. All right, man. All right, Goose. We gonna, we gonna talk to you later, but hey, next time, man, uh, we gotta get back on the show again, and go, especially when we start talking about money. Because I'm gonna try to get the NIL guy who's ever gonna be the poor person for the NIL. I'm gonna yeah. try to get him on the show and, and throw some questions at him. And I'm, I need to have you come in there because you probably, you know, rich people know different questions than poor people. I just know, like the you know, no. you, you know the, the tech I, stuff. So I need to get you. I wish I, I wish I was rich. I'm uh, I'm, try, I'm trying to get there, bro. I'm, yeah. I'm I tell you, I work every day. I hear you, man. All right, Groove. Thank right. you, Groove, from uh, BlueDeathValley.com. All right, man. Y'all take care. All right. All right. Take That's care, good. man. All right, gentlemen. That's cool, guys. I owe him. He got he got he got some gear. Anybody else? We got about uh 15 minutes here. If y'all want some more gear, get on the show. Share your thoughts, especially a band person. Man, people got so much to say on on Twitter, but when you, when you give them a mic, they get they, Troy. When you give when them you a mic, it's, when you, man, when you poke the bear, you 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 better expect them to bite. Nah, nah, <laughs> you I poke that back. bear too often. Who was, who was the young lady that took the invite about two years ago? What was her name? Uh, Kelly Dr. Worth. Dr. Kelly Worth came on. Ke oh, yeah, Kelly. She was, she, was, she was phenomenal. Doug Brown, she was phenomenal. We need to get her back on the show. Class. Yeah, you know, um, I really wish you would have let me on that show. Um, because my position is yeah, what what was really being shown was that the love for the BGMM that Aggie Nation had, the importance yeah. of the BGMM at our games and our events. Yeah, that's what was really happening. You know, hey man, we need the band here, and they're gonna help Troy, the team. Troy, Troy, it's we like be good. It's like if somebody's at a concert and they do a great thing, what do they do? They get an encore. The crowd's like, come back, give us more, right? And so it's like that, that's that's talk. Let's spend two minutes on this. So basically, the the sentiment I got was, you know, um, and how, how it all started was uh I saw the flyer on Twitter that the school put out, and they had the band video in the background, and they said, you know, celebration. I'm like, wow, this is great, they're gonna be performing. So, you know. Next, you know, it, it, I, you know, I was saying it would have been great if the band could have performed Saturday, but we had that full house and all those fans. And it's not like they're 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 going to a hostile environment. It's not like you know, what I'm saying y'all got to go to Fayetteville Street in Durham. You're going to places where you're loved and revered. Why not, you know, use you know, twenty minutes of you know, and, and perform 
and you can put something on the school board, donate to the Blue and Gold Marketing Machine Scholarship Fund. You could have uh, local high school kids from Dudley and Smith, and they could come and 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 recruit. You know, I'm like, why not use that opportunity? That's what I say. It's a spring game. You got a captive audience. It's the only thing going on in April. Why not use that? And I think the school, that's why I say synergy. We got to understand we don't have all these opportunities. You don't have to wait to uh, homecoming just to do what you can do it. You have other times you can do it. So I put that out there. And for some reason, it triggered the band. And like, they're like, no, you always want us to be at your beck and call. And we, we, you know, we, we, we're not here for to entertain you. We got us like, good Lord, calm down, hold on, take a breath, calm down. And, and like Troy says, I'm saying we want to hear you perform because we like your performance. We like your style. We like your style, your quality. And it's not like we're saying you got to perform at every scrimmage <laughs> that they have. Every, every time the, the team practices in spring, you don't have to have, you know, 20 people out there blowing the horn. We're just saying at the culmination, right? The, right. the, the coup de gras of this of the spring camp, it'll have been great if you break out all the stops, have the cheerleaders, the band, the whatever. Just have everybody come out, make it a full gala. And they didn't want to hear that. And you know, I got everything, I would call me everything but the child of God, uh Dougie Brown. So uh, you know, I don't understand. But Troy, maybe you can give me some insight. Like what is the mentality that I'm missing here? Because Hey, um, so you know the same thing with the uh, the women's basketball game. No pep band for two of the games. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. Well, it looks like Craig wants to say something. I'll oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Craig. You want to jump in? Well, you know, you were you were talking about why why you were talking about why why did people react so uh, uh, were were so you know were hostile in their response to you? To be perfectly honest about. It, I could see, I could see their viewpoint because the way it came off, it came off as almost accusatory. Like the band didn't, you know, give a crap about, you know, the football program or athletic program in general. And I don't think that was it. I think there's a, I think there's, I think it's what you said earlier. There, there needs to be a central, there needs to be some sort of central link. Uh, uh, we need to do pre-planning. And if we're going to do things like if we, if we want to see things like this or do things like this, then it has to then it has to it has to come. It's not it's not about the band per se or the kids in the band and their supporters, but I think it has to come from the administration where Definitely. it's properly coordinated. Uh, you know, we were talking about earlier in the show uh, about uh, you, we, you know your expectations or you know, uh, expectations of a big event, the way, the way the social media, uh, uh, put the, uh, put the, uh, uh, graphics up. It appeared that it was going to be like this giant, this giant carnival festival type thing. Yeah. And I think my personal opinion, and I'm from a different, probably because I'm from a different generation. I think people expect too much out of social media. Uh, that it is the begin, the begin, all and end all for, for, for promoting of, uh, for, for, uh, uh, for uh, setting, setting a tone. I think you have to, you have to put it in a framework to make these things happen. You just can't just do it by ha happenstance and say, okay, let's go out here and let's have a, let's have a, uh, uh, let's have this big thing. Uh, you know, ten days out, or somebody comes up with an idea. Let's let's do this, do this, do this. It takes a lot of planning to put on large events. Uh, and believe me, I know. I've, yeah. I've, I did it. I, I did those. I did that for the state of North Carolina for a long time. Of doing that, you know, doing that to a, to a, to a much smaller degree with AAF. But it takes a lot of time, effort, and coordination to put together big events uh, that are going to come off. Uh, right, uh, because you can put something together that's haphazard, and yeah, you, you know you get what you pay for. Right. right so right. you know, I, I just think I just think that our expect we need to we need to keep our expectations within within uh, w within reason when we start talking about uh, why didn't the band why didn't the band do this or why the band didn't do that. I understand their viewpoint. 
because I think the kids, I think the kids in the band work as hard as any athletes that we have on campus. Uh, it's a different, it's a different type. It's a different type of, it's a different type of atmosphere. It's a different type of operation, but the effort and the time and the investment and the sacrifices are just as great as any, as any student athlete on campus. It's like the cheerleaders. Cheerleaders weren't, you know, I, you know, I didn't see anybody screaming about the cheerleaders not being there after winning, the, you know, the NCAA. I Listen, yeah. I want, I did, like I said, but what I'm saying they, they is, I don't, yeah. I don't, I didn't see, I didn't see the vitriol thrown their way, or any question, anybody questioning their loyalty to the athletic program because know. they just came, because they just came off a national championship. Well, they should have been out there. I, I just don't see that. I think we just have to temper that, temper that, with yeah. common sense, uh, rather than just taking it and running with it. Because I see, yeah. I see so much of that. You see so much of that on, on on social media, where somebody will take a comment. It may not have been intended that way, yeah. but the way it comes off and the way it's worded has a lot to do with it. It's a lot different talking to somebody in person versus tapping on a keyboard. So I, just, I that's my two cents worth. No, I agree, and I, uh, and Doug, you guys, you can jump in too. Um, I'm sure you got a unique perspective. Uh, you know, being your family and stuff, but um, I don't, and like I say, I don't think initially anybody was accusing the band per se of opting out. I just think I, my thing was why are, and I, uh, like I said, I said it from a top level position why are our leaders, and, and once again, hearts back to Craig, why are we not planning the inclusion of all these entities? Like it's, it's it's not a unilateral deal. Like the the like nobody thinks the band got an invite and they say hell no, we ain't going to that football hell no. No, it's like I'm pretty sure no invitation was sent to the band. I'm pretty sure no one told asked even asked Dr. Ruff to assemble a skeleton group of maybe 50 band members, not the whole full force. Just give me 50 guys who can play, you know, smash something. So it's it's I, I'm I'm pretty sure that wasn't the case. But still saying that, you know, I, I'm a dreamer. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm a visionary. I believe that even though it's Tuesday before um, a WNB, uh, um, uh, WNIT game, I can go on social media and convince enough people to wear gold so we can have a gold out because I think it's the right thing to do. I'm not, I'm not going to not put that out there just because it's, uh, it's hard. It's never been done before. Hell, bluedeathvalley.com has never been done before, right? <laughs> You know, blue death out the dark. It's always going to be some impossible thing until you do it. Okay, so having a band, and we we can just fast forward twenty twenty four. Having a band participate just like they do at the Fun Fest, which they will already probably uh, schedule to do in a couple of months for Fun Fest, right before the season. We can have that same organization and just do it early in the year in April, and we can do that next year. And then nobody's to blame. We can say, you don't have to, we can all bygones be bygones, but it can, it can happen. But if our leaders don't talk and they don't cross pollinate until next February, then they still going to happen. And we'll be having the same conversation because I'll probably put it on Twitter why the hell this didn't happen. I told y'all last year to make it happen. So, and like I said, it might be, Dougie, and you please jump in here. It might be a situation where we got to wait till we get a new chancellor and the new chancellor says, this ain't this ain't working as smoothly as I need to be. I'm gonna reorg some stuff. And we're gonna take this band from here, we're gonna put them over here, and then you know some some schedule we're gonna we're gonna say is uh is is a definite, it's not it's not negotiable, we're gonna have this and that, you know, and, and that might be that might be the way going forward that, that solves all this stuff, you know. Um, but Doug, yeah, you wanna jump in this anything or I mean, I'm not 100% sure of the band schedule. Um, I do know that the intention of the football program for the spring game is to continue to build and get better. So, you know, I don't yeah. expect their focus to be on whether or not the band comes to the spring game. Um, but we already said that the band is, is preparing for some spring concerts and they've got some stuff that they line up. And they're in a the recruiting season. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to strike up the band is more than a notion. Uh, if you got those kids on campus on Saturday, you got to – Worry about feeding them as well and making sure they're in place. And then it takes staff to kind of oversee them and chaperone them and things of that nature. And I know right. it's, it's it's right up the street and, uh, you know, it's right across 
from where the practice field is and that sort of thing. But, you know, it, like you said, it does take planning. Uh, maybe we need to that, make that part of the schedule or they, we need to talk and get those conversations going a, a bit earlier. But um, it is kind of late in the um, in the semester and those kids are getting ready for exams, preparing for the close of a semester. So, um, yeah, you know, the, the, the women's NIT, you know, they were able to rustle up in the, the pet band again and, you know, for one of those games. And, you know, gosh, you'd love to have them there every game. It didn't work out that way, but those are things that those are new challenges for us. And I'm glad that we're getting an opportunity to um, kind of work some of those things out because it'll just bode well for us in the future. So, you know, I think the band's off to a good start this year. You know, they started out in Pasadena marching in the Rose Bowl parade for the most part. And um, it's going to be a big year and there'll be plenty of opportunities um, for the band and the community and the, uh, the athletic department to interact. Um, that is what Fan Fest is for, right? You know, so although we would have liked to be in April, there's been plenty of spring games that we canceled at the last minute due to weather, right? Um, we've had spring yeah, yeah. games at Dudley High School before. We've come a long way. I still think this is probably yep. one of the most highly attended spring games. So we're building, you know, to say that you're building better spring games and a better atmosphere for spring, um, you know, that's that's and, 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 the, and the overall production value can increase because, you know, it's kind of, you know, I think they tried to do um, kind of like a background with note with music with the DJ. I don't know if they pull that off. It's kind of a different animal from Club Corbett. So you have a DJ mixing in, and it, it almost has to be like they do. Uh, if you have been to arena football, they play music during the action. So so so, so he was kind of like stopping and only playing during halftime or like during the timeouts. I'm like, you know, this is not. I mean, what's different than a regular game? You, you know, we don't need to have a DJ for that. You can have the, the loudspeaker. Somebody just, push the button so but before we you know we get late in the game let me bring in somebody from the band his name is marching band 1969 clarence mm -hmm. clarence going on man hey even, even though you've been I, on here before i like you better than troy so i'm, I'm gonna send you some blue up here too so when you get off the show <laughs> shoot me uh shoot me a dm with, with your shirt size and i'm gonna shoot you i'm gonna send you something too because uh i ain't seen you in a while and, and you, you don't right. pay fifty dollars somebody hold me fifty dollars and get nothing from me but go ahead well, I wanted, I have, I've been reading all the comments on Blue Death Valley. I have yes. started to enter in comments myself and respond. I thought, I'm not going to waste my time. So um, let me just start off by saying, I've been around the band for about 60 yeah. years. There's two things yes, that I think people, people really don't catch. Number one, everything at, at the end of marching season, which is usually around, uh, used to be the central game at Thanksgiving, the band turns in their uniform and they then they go into concert season. So it is it's been that way for 60 plus years. So somebody's going to have to sit down and say, OK, let's change this pattern. Uh, yeah, change it. Rather than. Uh, yeah. Change that. Number two. Yeah. Hold on. Hold, hold on. Hold, hold on to your gear. I guess I got okay. for that right now. I, I, everything I'm, I got solution for. Hold on to your gear. Don't turn your gear in yet. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm listening. You're, what? Can you hear me what? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Go, ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, so number two. Right now, at this very moment, the band is working on its its fall uh, band performances. They've got they have an arranger who's out there writing music for these shows for this fall. As you've got somebody that's putting together the, the different formation stuff. In other words, they're doing all this stuff well in advance of the fall season. So everything is planned out. So so I'll go back to someone mentioned that I think Craig mentioned this earlier. If you want to change that pattern, someone needs to sit down with the with the band director and, and talk about we're planning on doing X this year. We'd like for you to participate so that they can do something around planning. You just don't take 200 plus students and a program that's at this level and and three or four days before the performance say, OK, we want you guys to show up and just play some stuff. Now, so I, that's all I'm saying is that, number one, it, it, it's been a tradition in the band. These kids now and Craig mentioned this used to be they would get off at Thanksgiving. That's 20 hours yep. a week that these guys have been practicing. They quit at Thanksgiving. Now it runs this year. It ran through Pasadena in January of this year. So they have put in a lot of hours. And nobody told them at the beginning of the season 
that they wanted them to be in the spring uh, practice game. You got to get that stuff in the schedule and get it worked in so Dr. Ruff and, the, and his staff can work on it. So anyway, that's my little two cents worth. So You know what? Uh, hey, hey, Clarence, I agree with everything you said. I, and I think what's going to happen is uh, I'm going I'm to I'm try to have a sit down with the new chancellor whenever he gets uh, a he or she gets installed. And one of the things I'm going to suggest is to make a um, uh, entertainment czar, right? Somebody who's in charge of all like promotional entertainment, cool stuff. And, and they can be like the middleman between athletics and the band. So, 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 cause we need somebody to whose job assignment and title it is to, to facilitate. Cause we wait yeah. for Earl Hilton to walk across the street to talk to Dr. Ruff, it's never gonna happen. It's never yeah. gonna happen, right? Yeah. So, and, and like and like Earl might not even know, hey, I need to have a band here. You know, that might have just been something that the fans thought about. So yeah. it's just putting stuff out there that just ideas. And I, I and let me let me be the advocate for you guys. I don't think Dr. Ruff, if some if, if Earl Hilton would have called Dr. Ruff in February and said, look, we got a big thing. We got a new coach. He's one of ten. He's trying to re, you know, reintroduce introduce himself to the fan base. We want to do a whole big thing. Can we get the band to show up for like, you know, 30 minutes at halftime and let's do something for cool? You know, I don't think Dr. Ruff would have said, hell no. I think if you if you would have presented that to him, he would have made it happen. I'm pretty sure there was nothing that present was presented to him. You know, well, so I, I don't I, think everybody just knew, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I would, I, I, I will I will go on record here. I never tried to speak for Dr. Ruff, but I I can't tell you this. this we need. We, we, I've said this on Blue Death Valley. And he is the world's worst at marketing itself. It misses a million opportunities. And part of it is yeah. we we working in silos. Um, you know, the athletic department is working in one direction and doing their thing. The, the band is working in one direction and doing their thing. And the cheering squad, it's all doing, everybody's doing their thing and they're doing it well. The challenge is we don't have anybody that says, you know, it would be really great if we pull these two organizations together and we do such and such. Um, so I, I saw the other day that they, that they were going to honor the band of the year at a and yeah. sometime Monday. This, 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 Next, Monday. Are they going Monday to do something with the cheerleaders? Are they doing are they doing something with the cheerleaders at the same time? I would think, listen, thank you, Clarence. You would think great <laughs> opportunity to to to, 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 to combine all that, right? Cheerleaders. Yeah. And what about bowling? Bowling didn't win national championship. There you go. Awesome. There you everybody go. come out there. But 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 a, yeah. a an yeah. organization that is focused in on on and understands the importance of marketing itself would see the value of pulling those two organizations or three organizations together, doing it all one time, and having having the media there, the, this local TV station, and so forth. That an organization that is not into the marketing misses the opportunity. So I, I you know, like I said, I. Um, and, 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 the, and the thing is, Clarence, the thing is, is that in a few weeks or months, they're going to be reaching out to everybody talking about we need some donations from y'all, right? We need y'all to, to go to this capital giving campaign or this uh, NIL collection. Yeah. And yeah. So sure. having more exposure, more events like this will only, you know, entice new people to don donate. The, the, the yeah. more the more you're visible, the more people will see you. And want, hey, I, I want to support that. It's a win-win. But you know, yeah. I, I digress. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I, All I, right. I'm so going, so I'm going to go silent again. Yes. So before you uh, forget, go on the Blue Death Valley and shoot me a PM. Give me your address and your shirt size, and I'm gonna send you some stuff for coming on the show tonight. And uh, I'm not okay. sending you anything to the Concord. And the uh, Concord, North Carolina. We'll see you. And to my new and to my new frat brother, my new pie brother. My new pie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on now. Gonna tell you, All right, all right, Clarence. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate all it. Right. Appreciate it. All right, that was uh March Ben, nineteen sixty nine. All right, so we gotta get out of here. We kind of over our, our limit. Uh, you know, I got a little bit. I got one more video. So let me go ahead because I don't want any parents to be mad that I shortchanged their kid, their child. Let me run. These were like the backup quarterbacks. <laughs> That, that uh played uh in the game so we can kind of just go through this real quick in a few minutes i think the first one is uh the kid from delaware number five 
Noah Sanders. Name, uh, Noah Sanders. Six Noah Sanders. Yeah. Noah, Noah, yeah. Second down and seven for the offense. They were, you know, doing some good things there. Take that sack. So in the second half, we played Noah Sanders. And we played um, Jaheen Smith, quarterback from Byers Park in Charlotte. And then the last quarterback we played was Taffrey Peterman, number 16, uh, transfer uh, from a Division II school. Uh, so, Bass yeah. so nice, man. And so that was, was that still five in there? I think we still know what Sanders. Uh, bad handoff. Well, at least he got a little bit of juice in his in his feet, Craig. Craig, none, none of our quarterbacks yeah. are slow. I can tell you that. No, no, they all they all have the ability to, to get outside of containment and run the football. That was that was quite evident. It'll be a good attempt. And I think you'll see I think you'll see more of that in the it's fall it. because you know yeah. uh, when you got guys who can do that, you Number give five. that defense something else they gotta worry Number about. Sanders. Yeah. Not too bad, Craig. I take that. I told you the guys. That kid is the physical specimen, man. I, I didn't realize how big he was, and uh, you know, uh, it's one thing to look at a stat sheet until you actually see the guy in, in uh, person. Uh, he's yeah. a big kid. He's a big quarterback. So what was his deal? He just ran behind some politics in Delaware. He just, you know. Was no, 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 no uh, they had a lot. They had a bunch of. Uh, they had a grad transfer uh, last year. Then they had another kid that had been there three or four years before him. Uh, you know, he felt like he, you know, that. And I guess, I guess, this situation felt like he'd be better off someplace else. Uh, it's not for the lack of talent, because he, he, he's, uh, he's, a, he's, 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 you know, good strong quarterback. He just, he's going to have to learn our offense, and I think it's a learning process for all of them. With with a poor learning process for all of them, with exception of probably with oh, exception of probably Fomby and, and White, because they they Fomby's played in this offense before, uh, uh, very similar offense at Houston Baptist, and uh, and uh, KJ's been in the program now, going on his second year. So those guys are probably a lot more acclimated. And I'm probably ahead of the other uh, of the other three because of those two two okay. situations. Well, Craig, he almost had a signature moment right here you know, on this play right here. He almost, almost yeah caught. Yeah, this, this is a nice one here. Double move. Oh, there you go. Why you stop running, son? <laughs> oh man, he stopped running. You're right. I said the same thing when I saw the play develop. I said the guy stopped running. He's going to overshoot it. He could have rounded that back to that back line. He could have made that, that catch and stride if he would have kept going through it. And, you know, that's what that's what it feels when you're playing with the threes, man. You know, if he, if he was playing with the first string, maybe a Caldwell, somebody, a Monte Jones would go and get that ball for him. Uh, yeah, this is one of the guys. Uh, I see the other quarterback. Who is this? Is this, is this 11? That's still five. I can't see. What number is that, Doug? You got yeah, that uh, Jamie. Uh, Jamie. Jamie. Uh, not white. Uh, Smith. Jamie Smith. Here for me, Smith. From Myers Park. Yeah. He throws a good ball. Just don't throw it to an actual gold receiver. <laughs> he would throw some dimes to make it feel like, you know, open space. But, uh, yeah, he's not the biggest fella in the world, but he is quick. Yeah, let me see his ball. Good ball, good ball. Let me get one more. 
Yeah, it's a good pass. Ain't got a big set. Little spike, man. Peterman's pass is complete to number 15. Let me pass for a little So we got uh, the last kid was in there with 16. Is that him? Yeah, this, this is uh, this is the guy that transferred from uh, New Mexico Tech or and uh, he was he was Division two guy, but he had some. Yeah, Craig, you, you look at his bio. He had some uh, some, no, some offers. Know. Division one offers coming out of high school. His name is uh, yeah yeah. Uh, Taki Peterman, number sixteen. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, he's from that Tampa that Tampa Florida area, and uh, when he came out of high school, he had uh, he had uh, three FBS offers. So uh, he he no, he, he's not a. He, he's he's he, he's nobody's uh, he's nobody's chump, uh, bent warmer. Yeah, you know. uh, he's not a practice player. The guy the guy has some skills. Could have been touchdown right here. Look at this pass. Oh, yeah, catch that, son. Yeah, really, that's a touchdown. They hit you. They hit you the wrong spot. But yeah, so that's Peterman, and uh, you know, I gotta get out of here. But yeah, so so five quarterbacks on the roster, Dougie. Uh, you got about thirty running backs. So we good, we good quarterback and running back. I I will say this though, um, just you know, since everybody's going to ask as far as the quarterbacks we lost based on the quarterbacks we got, uh, Troy. I don't know how you feel, but I feel like it's pretty much a net a net gain loss. But I, I don't think we're way better than last year's quarterback room. You know. I think as far as you know, anything, KJ White's more mature, but talent level, you know, Brick House, um, excuse me, Brick Handler, uh, Hendon Hooker, and Zach Yeager, them dudes could play. So uh, th th it's not like we had a whole bunch of scrubs and we got some good players. Uh, I think uh, Noah Sanders and uh, Fomby. And these other guys, they can play too. So we'll we'll see. You know, I think the biggest difference is we got. <laughs> I think I think we upgraded an offensive coordinator. I think David Marsh is going to be better than uh, his predecessor. So that so that's that's might be the encouraging thing. Yeah, you know, um, I, yeah, I can't call it in terms of which which set of quarterbacks is better. But but here's what I'll say. Yeah. Last year before the season started, we only had three games across all four of those quarterbacks that had been starters. Just three games. This year, um, we have K.J. White with six starts. And I believe I've seen Fomby with at least 12. So we are a bit more experienced in terms of being starting, having starting quarterbacks than what we had last year. And, of course, Fomby is older, a graduate um, transfer. So uh, more experience, I think, is the big deal that I know about right now. But we'll see how they perform. All right, so let's get out here. Final word. Uh, that was your final word, Troy. You say nothing else. Craig, give us a, a send out, and then we'll, we'll let Doug Brown, since he's uh, the man of the hour, we'll get him the final word. Wait, 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 how, how would you sum up? Yeah. These, uh... I, I think, uh, I think, I think talent wise, and, and, and I go back to what I said on the board, and, uh, and I've said it uh, publicly, is that I think the physical nature of this football team is now uh, uh, where we can play on an even keel uh, with the teams in the CA. Well, the problem, the problem last year, we were physically overmatched. It wasn't from this. It wasn't necessarily about X's and O's. Uh, we have better talent. We have we've uh, got some new. We got some kids in. We we brought in some kids now. I think that uh, that uh, does brings us up to to the level of, of teams and uh, to the better teams in this conference. I think the younger kids, all those kids that we played last year, like the Josh Isaiah's and those folks, uh, that year of trial by fire as true freshmen, I think really uh, is going to serve them well going into the fall. So I think we're better in that regard. They're, we've, we've gotten a lot stronger. My hat's off to the uh, – my hat's off to the uh, new, uh, uh, well, it's not new anymore, but to the uh, strength and conditioning uh, team. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
uh, they have done a remarkable job in putting on some putting on muscle, uh, good muscle and good weight on uh, some guys. Because uh, as I said earlier, the broadcast, I saw guys last year were playing at 230, 240, and now 270, 280, and uh, some bigger than that. So I think I think that's that's the biggest thing. We physically match up. We should be able to match up with teams. And if we can physically match up and, and and be physically there at the beginning of the fourth quarter, I think you won't see the fumbles uh, that yeah. we had in crucial situations. Well, I, I think you'll see good our player. defense hold on, you know, and uh, uh, and not get steamrolled by the, by the running game. Passes of what passes didn't hurt us as much as it did teams beat us by running the football. And most of that was because of fatigue, because, More down. you know, with the exception of maybe two games, we pretty much were in uh, most of our CAA conference games. We were in them right up until, the, until the, you know, the last four or five minutes of the game. So, and that it was because of the physicality or the lack thereof. And I think now I think we're seeing the fruits. I think we'll be a lot better. We'll be in much better shape to, to, pull, to stay in those games and, and, and uh, win some this fall. Yeah. All right, Dougie. Hey, man, I think you guys <clears throat> hit it on the head with football, man. Uh, but before I go, I want to give a shout out to uh, the Aggie Bowling team as well as the Lady yeah. Aggie basketball team and Coach T. Rob. Man, I've been away for a long time, uh, but I thoroughly enjoyed uh, the basketball season and this postseason. If you ask my son right now who his favorite basketball player is, he'll probably tell you Malia Bracone. As my favorite basketball player, uh, it was a sad day that I did not get to watch what I thought would be her last game in Aggie uniform. She's, she's um, coming back. She's coming back, right? But when I saw the news, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Return, uh, for another year, you know, the Grace of Blue and Gold, man, things like that just make me happy. Uh, I hate to see any athlete go, but uh, especially athletes who have made their way to my all Aggie team. Uh, Malia Bracon, shout out Malia Bracon. Hey, hey Doug, Doug, yeah. I don't know, I don't know if those girls come back if not for that WNIT run and having those three home games at the at Corbett and the love. I mean, they were the bells of the balls. <laughs> they were the bells of the ball for 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 three straight weeks. Just, you hit you know. the nail on the head, and I would like to say to any Aggie fan out there to take a look at the women's basketball program because I believe that is the model, and that's where we can go. Yeah. Um, as the athletic department. I mean, uh, Terrell, you know, he got it out the mud. He, you know his history. You know he was here. Yeah. Uh, spent time on the bill. Spent his time at VCU. Uh, but when he came back, man, and, and you just saw his vision, he's been able to stack win after win, no matter what, who the competition, no matter the league. And um, I just think they're a model. I mean, you can see the growth. You can see them building. You can see them recruiting. You know the facilities are coming. Uh, believe it or not, Samaj. And I just think it's going to be fun to watch them grow and continue to be successful and just watch them set the tone. I think this uh, this entire spring was just good for our athletic department um, as to kind of just peeking around the curtain to see what, where we get, where we can go um, when things line up. So, you know, my word trajectory, I think we're heading in the right path and the right in the right um, direction. And so, of course, we got to do our part and I'm looking forward to this summer. Yeah. All right, Trey, any uh, housekeeping stuff we need to know? Because I know you're the man of the, of the events and calendar. Anything we need to know about this week? Uh, oh, man. Uh, you put me uh, on go ahead, Kurt. No, go ahead. No, no, he put me on the spot, so I'm not ready. Go ahead. Stay ready. Oh, be ready. Well, the uh, only thing I got to say is, uh, you know, we got a baseball – we got a big baseball series coming up uh, this weekend. You got to come out um, there, guys. Delaware. Yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, the Aggie uh, or baseball team uh, knocked off High Point this afternoon, so that 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 that's uh, that's good news because uh, High High Point has always been a thorn in our side, yeah. and uh, we went over there and took them took them down today five four. So you know, uh, if you haven't seen a baseball game, let's get get out there. I think the weather the weather is turning right now to where you can sit out there and you don't have to have a parker on and yeah. And and a snow snow outfit. Just, uh, just, you can. Yeah. Get, I, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, they're playing good basketball. Yeah. Get vaccinated. Uh, a lady softball. 
No, oh, Lord. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, softball team, softball team has come around. They're a real young team, but they've been playing good the softball the last couple. They've put together a couple back to back wins. Uh, so, and, and track and field is now getting underway, and we've got the top. What's it, four by one hundred or four by four hundred? Uh, uh, we're ranked number one in the country. Uh, so, I also saw today where we signed the uh, the uh, number one pole vaulter in the state of North Carolina. Wow. Uh, got a commi- got That's a commitment from, got commitment from her uh, this afternoon. Uh, so we're trending right, as like Doug said, the trajectory is on. The, is, we're on the right path, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see some wins start stacking up uh, in in this uh, 24-25 school year. I'm I'm waiting to uh, I'm waiting for uh, uh, I'm waiting to see uh, Coach Ross making some moves on that bas- on the basketball front, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, a couple guys. A couple things. If a couple things break our way, we're going we're. We're going to surprise a whole lot of people in basketball real quick. So, you know, we'll, uh, you know, just, just be patient, Aggies. It's, uh, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Hey, um, so you want me to go go ahead with a few things here, um, Simon? Please, brother, please. All right. So um, a few big things. Uh, our men's tennis team is going to be participating in the uh, CAA Tennis Championships up in uh, Williamsburg, Virginia. I think that's at uh, William & Mary. Um, how about track and field is going to be at uh, Aggie Station? I mean, at yeah, True yeah. Stadium this weekend for the Aggie, Aggie, Aggie Classic. Classic. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So we got that'll be Friday and Saturday. The men's tennis turn, um, championships is Thursday to Sunday, um, and then our men's golf team is going to be participating in the CAA Conference Tournament down in Helena Island, Saint Helena Island, South Carolina, um, mm-hmm. starting Sunday and going to Tuesday. So those are the big things happening. All right. So uh, if you if you um, on campus, we got the Aggie Classic track and field, and then we got War Memorial. We got to beat, you know, we got to at least get two out of three. I hope we get a sweep, but we got to beat Delaware. And uh, go go on on on, on bluedeathvalley.com and buy some gear, buy some uh, Blue Death gear, some uh, War Warboard Boys shirts, and uh, paraphernalia hoodies and something like that, and you can uh, wear it at the stadium. So uh, till next time, we win. One more thing. One more thing. Okay. One more thing. Um, I do want to say um, the softball team is going to be down in Charleston at the College of Charleston for our um, Low Country Aggies if they can go out and support them. Yeah, okay, that's that's close enough. Yeah, so yeah. support the Lady Aggies and then they're, they're, they're doing better. You know, they're winning some. So uh, till then, uh, next next time we gotta have a inside the valley get some big time guests coming here. Maybe get Doctor Ruff come. Can some can somebody give me Doctor Ruff's cell phone number? I'm going to get him on the show. But. Uh, <laughs> But uh, tell, hey, Doug, tell Tiffany to set it up, man. Hey, synergy, synergy. We got to get together, everybody together, man. But uh, till uh, then, for A.T. Roy, President Craig Turner, and my uh, newly minted Kappa, Mr. Doug Brown. I am Samaj Marsh. This has been Blue Death After Dark. See you next time. Peace. Thank, Thank you, Pride. Thank you, Pride.